What about Bob? This video will analyze the film What About Bob in the context of people and society. The difference between being sick mentally and being a confident, well-rounded individual is so close that in this video I'd like to go into the notion of what is mental illness in relation to the film What About Bob? On the surface, this 90s comedy is a superficial glimpse of someone with various anxiety issues. However, if we look closer, we can see that Bob is representing all of us with fears of the unknown world. The moment he steps out into his world, he is afraid, like we all are, and he relies on the encouragement of an external force to nurture him and remind him constantly that he is okay. Like Bob, we get addicted to things that take away the pain. Alcohol, sugar, relationships, obsessions, etc. Bob gets addicted to his therapist because his therapist makes him feel like he's getting better. Once he realizes that Dr. Marvin can help him, he expects the doctor to keep making him feel better because he is unable to feel good by himself without that reinforcement. Think about you and your social media and the food that you eat, the video games that you enjoy, the drinks that you drink, whatever addiction you can see in your life, notice how often you need it to reinforce that feeling of feeling good. He is at war with his thoughts and feelings about anything in this world because he is lonely. He doesn't have the support in the rest of his life. I'm a patient of Dr. Marvin's. I have to speak with him right away. It's urgent. I'm sorry, Mr. Wiley, but Dr. Marvin's uh, it's out of Bob. Town. And you are? Betty. Betty, hi. Bob, Dr. Marvin's out of town and Dr. Harmon's taking his calls. And so this one thing, this one glimmer of hope the doctor, his therapist, leads him on a path of self-discovery. Dr. Marvin correctly stipulates in the first few moments of their meeting that he has a family detachment issue, whereby he appears to want to form a connection with a family of some kind to feel good. He notices this. Bob sees Dr. Marvin's family in a photo and immediately sees what he wants and it fills him with hope. However, he has so many problems in his life that he can't have those things. He tells the doctor about his divorce and explains to him that he is worried about everything. We can put ourselves in this situation. We are all afraid of something and perhaps we are afraid of many things. But when he sees what he wants and is given the advice to take baby steps towards his goals. His desire is fueled by the strength of his desire for what the doctor has. Baby step, but I'm not a slacker. Check it out. Look at him. I'm in really bad shape. Come on, please. Please. Bob. In a sense, give me, give me, give me. he becomes addicted to the doctor because he wants to be in the doctor's position. That is his goal that fills him with hope. And for all of us, this is the same. When we see what we want, it fills us with hope and allows us to push through the difficult things to go to something that we really want. The doctor-patient relationship suggests that one person is dealing with problems and the other has all the answers. And it also seems this way in real life too. We often go around looking at other people thinking, 
They have everything sorted out, but my life is a mess. The truth of the matter is that everybody needs support. People need support, and they need a carrot in front of their eyes. For Bob, his carrot is the doctor, and the doctor's advice. The doctor sends him on his way with a little bit of hope. And buoyed by his enthusiasm, Bob keeps pushing himself to use the elevator, use public facilities, and eventually to get on a bus. These are things that he never thought possible, never thought he'd be able to do. None of this would have happened if he didn't really want to get the next hit of encouragement from his new doctor. The simple notion of baby steps is ingeniously woven into the story, representing how Bob is step by step overcoming his fears. He starts off as a paranoid, multiphobic personality and becomes more and more fearless with each encounter. He has to catch the bus to go to go to Lake Winnipesaukee. He meets lots of new people. He has to go to new places, all of which he would never have done before if it were not for having to track down Dr. Marvin. People often retreat into their own safe world that is painful, but it is familiar. But how often does something so important push us to tackle our fears one by one? If we can find that thing that pulls us out of our comfort zone, that thing is the special thing that we have been looking for to help us become who we are meant to be. The comedy in the film is centered around Dr. Marvin telling him to go away and even trying to kill him. Get out! Get out! Is it something I said? You've ruined my life! You've ruined my career! You've ruined my book! You've turned a perfectly peaceful house into an insane asylum! Get out! But Bob still remains convinced that the doctor has therapy that will cure him for good. The doctor calls it death therapy, and although the doctor meant it literally, Bob's interpretation does what he hopes it will. It causes him to give up his fear of death and finally start living the life he wanted. Synchronistically, Dr. Marvin has turned crazy in the process of Bob infiltrating his life. You see, Bob is completely oblivious to how much the doctor hates him and how much the doctor wants to get rid of him. And the ritualistic act of tying him up and telling him that he's going to be blown up creates the situation that feels real to Bob because he is with the therapist that he really believes in and he's been given a situation which is so far removed from his normal life in the middle of a forest with um, rope around him with explosives that the fact that he manages to get out of the ropes symbolically tells himself that he has in fact been cured even if it was completely misinterpreted from the doctor's perspective the doctor actually did want to kill him but to his mind it was a therapy that was successful so symbolically and actually he feels as though he is 100% cured on the other hand Dr. Marvin has gone completely insane he has been step by step ousted from his own family by Bob And every step he takes, he infuriates his son, he infuriates his daughter, he infuriates his wife. And he's getting more and more angry. And so the family starts to listen to him less and less. And he reaches that point where he feels as though everything has been lost. And so he becomes catatonic and he won't even speak anymore. This shows us that listening and support is what each person needs to function correctly in society. Bob had no one. 
He couldn't do anything. He found in a new therapist support and a loving family overnight. Whereas the doctor had everything. He had the loving support of a whole family. But even over a period of days, he loses it all. And so they have indeed swapped roles in a very short period of time. This shows quite obviously and humorously that falling from grace is quite easily done. Anyone who is treated badly or misunderstood for a period of time or not recognized for who they can be causes that person to become severely agitated and mentally ill. The human body and also the mind require understanding and time to grieve and get over things that hurt us. But we are always able to heal if we are able to see what we truly want. Because this allows us to move forward. We can see a, a way out of the nightmare of the past. Dr. Marvin is motivated by his rage. And he comes back to life in a sudden outburst. But his family, who he loves deeply, reach out to him, and therefore he is able to recover. Bob has taken baby steps from totally dysfunctional to married and completely readjusted within a short amount of time, all due to having something to love and strive for. The true meaning of this film beyond the amazing comedy is that you can change your life. No matter what you're afraid of, you just need to find something that is pulling at your desire and follow that. Let it push you bit by bit into challenges that are manageable. Don't forget that people are there to help and support you along the way, so long as you are not giving up. Bob didn't give up, even when he made a mistake. But the key here is when the dream is big enough and the steps are in front of you, you don't need to lose faith in yourself. You can just take the first step and then the next, and then the next, bit by bit.